Hey everybody, I'm Casey with SparkFun. Welcome to another edition of Robotics 101. Today we're going to talk about precision motion. But first, let's talk about the differences between precision and accuracy. One thing to note is precision and accuracy are two independent ideas, but they're completely relative to the system that you're looking at. A system that is one meter accurate, such as landing on the face of Mars, is a lot different than sub-millimeter accuracy with our pick-and-place machines downstairs. Taking a look here, let's look at some of the differences. So in this system, this is our target, and this is where things ended up uh, lying. This would be a system where you have high precision, but low accuracy. Moving over to another type of system is one here where you have low accuracy, low precision. Down here we have a system that is highly accurate. We're close to our target, but as you see the grouping's a little bit wide, so we wouldn't say that that's very precise. And then finally, what we're all trying to achieve is something that is highly accurate and highly precise. We can see these principles applied in a gantry built by one of our engineers here. As you can see, there's a motor driving a chain which moves this along a gantry. This is useful for uh, pick and place machines or some sort of a 3D printer. The advantages of using a stepper versus a DC motor is that a stepper motor has the capability of moving in precise small steps where you guarantee that the position is made. While using a DC motor, on the other hand, you can vary the voltage, but that only gives you a torque output. So if you put more load on the gantry itself, the motor may not move as fast as you want it to. To take it yet a step further, we could use something like an analog servo. Now a servo has an input signal and an output angle that's very close to our gantry where we have an input signal and an output position. However, we're all, there's no feedback in the system yet and uh, Robert will kind of show us how we can manipulate servos to extend their range or increase their output power. Let's talk about servo modification. Servo modification is necessary anytime you want to add some sort of gearing to your servo. The reason being is that the actual output shaft of the servo is what is referenced. So if that has a 90 degree swing and you connect it up to a, another gear that has a 10 to 1 ratio, you're only going to get 9 degrees or 1 tenth of that overall motion. So what we need to do is we need to actually take the feedback from the output shaft of the servo and move it over to the output drive shaft, which would be this big gear right there. Here we have a really simple pan tilt that consists of a couple servos, couple gears in this little configuration. We've got it hooked up to an Arduino with a little knob here that is controlling the PWM signal that will sweep this top servo. So as you can see, we have a very limited range of motion here because of the gearing of the servo. So what we're gonna do is remove the pot and connect it up here. The first thing that we need to do is take off some of these extra components so we can have access to the servo. We're gonna turn off the power supply, take off the main gear, and then also take off the pinion gear after that. We just need to take off this rear cover by removing these four screws. So now we've exposed the main circuit board and also the actual motor here. If we lift this up, our potentiometer is actually located underneath. There's just one screw holding the potentiometer in place. We're gonna remove that to gain access to the potentiometer. From here, we can actually remove the whole servo housing. This gear is the final output drive gear. We can see that it has a slot in it, which mates up directly with the potentiometer. As you can see from the final output gear, there's a little nub or notch right there. This actually corresponds with a track on the inside of the housing and actually prohibits the final output shaft from turning a full 360 degrees. Every servo is going to be a little bit different and this notch or this nub is going to be different for pretty much every servo. Some of them have just a pin, some of them have this little notch. Thankfully this is actually a plastic gear so I'm just going to use a pair of diagonal cutters to just clip it off. If you do have a pin, usually you can grab a hold of it and pull it out. There are other methods, you can even use a Dremel, a file, or something else. And now the housing goes back on top. Now we need to disconnect these wires, disconnect this potentiometer, and connect the wires onto this new potentiometer. We just need to make sure that the wires are connected in the same order that they were for the original potentiometer. The original potentiometer sat inside the servo just like that. So we're going to go red, yellow, green. 
The final output shaft now doesn't have a stop, so it's allowed to rotate indefinitely, and our feedback is moved up to this shaft. So we have two shafts that are in play. One of these shafts has the output from up here, so as we adjust this, it will actually make this one move. So as you can see, the motor keeps trying to spin because it's trying to find the point. It thinks that there's a potentiometer at the end of this, and if we just gently move this, we can actually stop the motor. It thinks it has found its position. And of course, if we were to move this pot, it would start moving again. So it's trying to find that position, and we can stop it. Before we attach the main drive gear, I'm going to adjust this upper pot, or the upper shaft, into the rough center position, just so there's a little bit less adjustment later. So I'll turn it all the way over to one side, and then find there is a rough center before I attach this gear. Now we have this properly connected back into our system, and when I move the knob, we can jog it back and forth. However, the problem that we have is if I set this to the zero position, that should be the center, and you can see that's a little off. It's really simple remedied. That's why we didn't clamp this yet. All I have to do is reach inside here and use a screwdriver and make slight adjustments. That is our zero point, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. Now if we do a full sweep, we've got full range of motion. That is how you hack a servo for an external control loop.